Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome to Temple Emmanuel. Whether you are here right here or here online, we're so glad you've joined us this Shabbat. This is a special Shabbat, Shabbat Hagadol, the great Shabbat, the Shabbat before Passover. Shabbat Hagadol is not just about remembering that we're about to be in Passover, so you have to remember to clean this weekend and get all your chametz out and all of that. It's to remind us that just before a moment of complete change, of total world-defying revolution, which is what the Exodus really was, things are actually kind of normal. You do just have Shabbat. Shabbat doesn't necessarily change so much just before the revolution comes. And how hopeful is that message? I'm sure that many of you are hoping for change in our reality, are seeing things that you wish could be different, that are worrying. And Shabbat Haggadol reminds us that we don't always know for sure when that change is going to happen. And sometimes it takes the ultimate confrontation, which is what the end of the Passover story is, the ultimate confrontation between God and Pharaoh. Hopefully, this evening, we have a much happier ultimate confrontation. And by being together, seeing each other, celebrating Shabbat, we will usher in a Passover of liberation that gives us a Shabbat for all time. I'm Rabbi Andy Kahn, joined on the Bima by Rabbi Amy Ehrlich, Rabbi Sarah Sepaden, and Cantor Sarah Anderson, and by all of you, as well as our choir and musicians upstairs. So as we turn to face each other and say Shabbat Shalom, which I'm going to ask you to do in just a minute, not yet. First, I'm going to introduce someone and invite her and her family up. Lily Lorber is becoming bat mitzvah this week. And so please do turn to your neighbors as the Lorbers come up to light the Shabbat candles and say hello, wish them a Shabbat Shalom. Bring that face-to-face -face joy that you wish to see in this new season of liberation. And Lorbers, you can come on up. Before I let you escape the Bima, Lily, I want to first congratulate you for all the work you've put in that you will show tomorrow and to explain why it's important that you lit the Shabbat candles because it symbolizes exactly what you're doing by taking the time to become bat mitzvah, by recognizing this moment in your life and committing yourself to the Jewish community writ large. No matter where you go in life, you will always be a Jew, and you will always find other Jews there. And by you adding this flame to these flames, you're representing the beautiful flame of your soul that you're adding to the Jewish people as you become bat mitzvah. So thank you so much for all that you've done and all that you will surely do to make the entire Jewish people proud. Mazel tov to you and your whole family. We now continue with our joyous Shabbat on page 
63 with Lecha Dodi.
invite you to rise if you can do so comfortably and turn to page 71 for the Barhu. Praise be thou, Lord our God, ruler of the world, by whose law the shadows of evening fall and the gates of morn are opened. In wisdom thou hast established the changes of times and seasons and ordered the way of the stars in their heavenly courses. Creator of heaven and earth, O living God, rule thou over us forever. Praise be thou, O Lord, for the day and its work and for the night and its rest. Together. Infinite as is thy power, even so is thy love. Thou didst manifest it through Israel, thy people, by laws and commandments, by statues and ordinances, hast thou led us in the way of righteousness and brought us to the light of truth. Therefore, at our lying down and our rising up, we'll meditate on thy teachings and find in thy laws true life and length of days. O oh, that thy love may never depart from our hearts. Praise be thou, O oh Lord, who hast revealed thy love through Israel. We read together, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O oh Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You may be seated. Bottom of page 73. Eternal truth it is that thou alone art God and there is none else. And through thy power alone has Israel been redeemed from the hand of oppressors. Great deeds hast thou wrought in our behalf and wonders without number. Thou hast kept us in life. Thou hast not let our footsteps falter. Thy love has watched over us in the night of oppression. Thy mercy has sustained us and now that we live in a land of freedom, may we continue to be faithful to thee in thy word. May thy law rule the life of all thy children and thy truth unite their hearts in fellowship. 
O God, our refuge and our hope, we glorify thy name now as did our ancestors in ancient days. Please rise. Shia 
Shalom again. Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Avraham, Vezrat Sara. Middle of 76. Eternal is thy power, O Lord. Thou art mighty to save. In loving kindness thou sustainest the living. In the multitude of thy mercies thou preservest all. Thou upholdest the falling and healest the sick, freest the captives, and keep faith with thy children in death as in life. Who is like unto thee, almighty God, author of life and death, source of salvation? We trust in thee to restore our life. Praised be thou, O Lord, who hast implanted within us eternal life. You may be seated. O loving God, may this Sabbath bring rest to every disquieted heart and be a healing balm to every wounded soul. Thou who hearest prayer, we beseech thee to endow us with a contented disposition. When we pray for new blessings, may we come to thee in the spirit of humility, remembering that we cannot know whether what we ask is really for our good. Help us to find meaning in times of joy and hope in times of sadness. When we sing thy praise, may our souls rise with our songs to thee. And when we render thee our homage, may we remember that only by faithfulness to thy commandments and the goodness of our deeds can we make our worship acceptable to thee. Look with compassion upon thy children and grant us strength of love and purity of purpose that we may live together in unity and work together in peace and concord, so that the well-being of all may be promoted, and thy name, O God, be glorified in all the earth. As our prayer for peace still echoes in our ears, we turn our thoughts to those who are most in search of peace, those dealing with illnesses, the body, the mind, the spirit. If there's anyone you're holding in your heart today that is in need of healing to feel such peace, I invite you to share their names aloud now. May they all find a speedy and complete healing as we pray together on page 126. Thank you. 
continue now with silent prayer, either guided by the meditations beginning on page 129 or by the prayers of our own hearts. Shabbat Shalom. On this Shabbat Hagadol, this Shabbat which 
precedes Pesach, the question I keep asking is this. Why is this night, this Shabbat, different from all other nights? And why will this Passover be different from other Passovers which have come before? This year, as we celebrate our festival of freedom, we do so against the backdrop of an existential fight for freedom and democracy in Israel, a fight that reached its boiling point earlier this week as the most far-right-leaning government in the history of the nation set its sights on reforming the Israeli judiciary by essentially crippling its ability to offer checks and balances on the legislative branch, much of the Israeli public has exploded in impassioned, angry opposition. Many Israelis fearful that these proposed changes to their Supreme Court would destroy their already fragile democracy have risen up in unprecedented swells. They've stormed the streets from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv, from Haifa to Be'er Sheva, from Afula to Ashdod, from north to south and east to west, Israelis are demonstrating for all to see and hear. And so, as we open up our Haggadahs this Passover and read of the Israelite masses who were too numerous for Pharaoh, let us call to mind the masses of protesters in Israel battling for the very soul of their nation. Astoundingly, the protests grew even larger this past weekend in response to the firing of Yoav Gallant, the defense minister who dared voice his doubts about this proposed legislation. When news of his firing hit the airwaves, the metaphorical dam broke sending throngs upon throngs of Israelis out of their homes and onto the streets. It's been reported that more than 600,000 Israelis gathered for demonstrations this past weekend. 600,000 in a country of just over 9 million. That's nearly 7% of the population, or about 1 in 15. That's one in 15 leaving their homes to loudly declare their rage at a government they feel doesn't have their interests at heart. One in 15 arising in the middle of the night to stand in the pouring rain screaming shame. Shame on a government that only wants to serve its majority. Shame on a government that hurls racist epithets at its minorities, shame on a government that openly incites violence against Palestinians. The protests were accompanied by labor strikes and mass shutdowns across Israel. Planes were grounded at the airport. Universities were shuttered. Public transportation was halted. Multiple municipal services were paused. And remarkably, in a bold show of principled activism, the mayors of Kfar Saba, Herzliya, and Zichron Yaakov went on a hunger strike in front of Prime Minister Netanyahu's office. As Professor Daniel Shamovitz, president of Ben Gurion University, stated to the New York Times, there comes a time in the history of a people or an organization when you have to stand up and be counted. Thus, as we open our Haggadahs this Passover and read about the great resistors of our history, like Shifra and Pua, the midwives who openly defied Pharaoh's decree to kill Israelite children, let us also think of our brothers and sisters openly and defiantly resisting in Israel, speaking truth to power. 
heard amongst the demonstrators carry enormous copies of Israel's Declaration of Independence, reminding the world of Israel's founding mission to ensure complete equality of social and political rights to all its inhabitants. Others hold up artful yet eviscerating posters, like one depicting Theodore Herzl, the founder of modern Zionism, with a tear running down his cheek. The poster telegraphs the message that under this government, the dream of Israel is disintegrating. The vision is coming undone. These signs capture the acute fears of the moment, fears that the judicial changes will permanently alter the fabric of Israeli society, yielding a country in which individual freedoms for Palestinians, for women, for members of the LGBTQ plus community, for non-Orthodox Jews and many more will not only be threatened, but eliminated. The stakes to protect Israel's citizens and democracy could not be any higher. And so, as we open our Haggadahs this Passover and read about Moses demanding to Pharaoh, let my people go, let us call to mind our Israeli brothers and sisters who are demanding that this new government let its racist, nativist, and homophobic platforms go so that all the people of Israel, including all minorities, can live in peace and dignity. Even as Israel's democracy is in peril, it is so vital for us to acknowledge the extraordinary political engagement we're seeing right now. This is democracy in action, and the scale of it is unlike anything we've ever witnessed, here or there. What's even more incredible is that the movement doesn't belong to any one party or organization. It includes notes author Anat Schneider, Orthodox religious Jews, secular citizens, young, old, women, men, and even children, all sectors as one nation. Gilad Kariv, a member of the Knesset and a reform rabbi adds, we see young people, veterans, the former leaders and commanders of Israel's security agencies, they're all there saying this judiciary reform will harm Israel. Yes, this is a movement and a moment that touches every generation, every class, and every part of Israeli society. Thus, as we open our Haggadahs this Passover and read, we were slaves to, to Pharaoh, and we cried out to God, and we were delivered, let us remember the power of we and the power of a community bonded in common cause. What we see in Israel is a model of how to effect change. There is power in numbers and power in a people united. That being said, Israel as a whole is far from united. As these protests have waged on, it has become ever clearer that the social divisions in Israel are wide and only growing wider. Even though hundreds of thousands have voiced their opposition to these judicial reforms, there are numerous Israelis in favor of those reforms. And there have been counter protests too. Israel and her citizenry are rife with discord and rancor. They are teeming with anger and frustration too. There are talks of compromise in the works facilitated by President Isaac Herzog, but only time will tell what those will yield. Thus, as we open our Haggadahs this Passover and ask those four time-honored questions, let us take a moment 
to ponder the existential questions facing Israel right now. What does democracy truly entail? What can a democracy truly withstand? And if full equality does not exist for all citizens, can democracy truly prevail? These questions are not simply theoretical or hypothetical. They are clear and present and real. Israel and her citizens are in crisis in Israel, the Israel Religious Action Center and the Israel Movement for Reform and Progressive Judaism, both of whom are doing heroes work in the fight for religious freedom and human dignity for all. They need our partnership. They need to know that we're here and that we'll stand by them today, tomorrow, and as long as it takes. We will and we must continue this fight. We will and we must continue to speak out. We will and we must continue to make Israel an integral part of our lives. And it is in these moments of challenge that we must remain all the more stalwart and steadfast and yes, even hopeful. Hopeful that justice can and will prevail. Hopeful that dignity can and will win out over immorality. And hopeful that equality can and will reign throughout the land. The journey we take on Passover always ends the same way. When we open our Haggadahs to that final page, it always reads, Bashana haba'a Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. These words are words of hope and faith that a more perfect world can yet be built, that goodness and peace can yet abide, that better days are yet ahead. We will not give up on Israel. We will not abandon this critical and miraculous project of Jewish statehood. And we will not stop working to fulfill Israel's vision of freedom, justice, and peace for all. Our hope, our tikva, is not yet lost. No, it lives, it breathes, it sings. Amen. Please rise if you are able and turn to page 262. <laughs> Page 231.
Eternal God, we face the morrow with hope made stronger by the vision of your deliverance, a world where poverty and war are banished, where injustice and hate are gone. Teach us more and more to respond to the pain of others, to heed your call for justice, that we may bring near the day when all the world shall be one. On that day, the age-old dream shall come true. On that day, O oh God, you shall be one, and your name shall be one. On that day. Page 241. In nature's ebb and flow, God's eternal law abides. When tears dim our vision and grief clouds our understanding, we often lose sight of God's plan. Yet we know that both growth and decay, life and death, all reveal God's purpose. God, who is our support in the struggles of life, is also our hope in death. We have set the Eternal One before us and shall not despair. In God's hands are the souls of all the living. Under God's protection we abide, and by God's love we are comforted. O life of our life, soul of our soul, cause your light to shine into our hearts and fill our spirits with abiding trust in you. At this time of tender memory, we call to our hearts our dear ones who were summoned unto eternity during this past week or at this time in seasons past. And we mention them by name. Peter Adelman, Louise Bamberger, Henry Arnold Bralauer, Kenneth Brody, Philip Brown, Jefferson Broderick Cone, Joseph H. Danoff, Francis Dolinger, Carl Ehrlich, Alfred Eisenpreis, Catherine Flowers, Gerald A. Glass, J. Glass, Edward Goldberger, Reuben Goldstein, 
George Gottlieb, Victor P. Green, Daniel Greif, Sebastian Haskell, Stephen J. Haupt, Nathan Heller, Christina Jaffe Lauren, Howard G. Janover, Jerome King, Ralph Conheim, Stephen Kraus, Mildred Roberts Kreitman, Nathan G. Krishoff, Galen James Crone, Florence Jean Lapidus, Erwin Levine, Isidore Saul Levinson, Evelyn Eve Linwood, Fanny Litt, Julius Miller, Richard Muchnick, Nath Martin Nathanson, Beatrice Nathanson, Henry M. Newman, Barbara Reed Rosenspie, Rosie Sepaden, Blanche Schwartz, Joseph Schwartzman, Gregory Shafir, Isabella Shafir, Arnold J. Singer, Shloma Smiley, Brent Smith, Herbert Stoller, Cynthia Stolman, Joseph Strauss, Diane Kallenbach Suba, Elsa Ehrlich Waldhorn, Scott Gary Waldman, Abe Wally, Richard H. Warren. We also grieve and take into our hearts the families of those who were gunned down in Nashville and with all who suffer losses from gun violence. We invite those who are in recent mourning, please to rise now. And those who are marking a yard sign, we would ask that you rise as well. And now we stand together as one congregational family to recite the words of the Kaddish on page 245. It gadal vi it gadash shemei raba, yom adivrach hirute v'yam lich malchute, v'chai echon v'yom echon v'chai yedichol beit Yisrael, v'agalaviz man kari v'imru, amen. Yehe shemei raba mivorach le'olam al-mei al-maya, Yit barach vi yishtabach, yit ho'ar vi tromam vi nase, yit adar vi talev yit halal shemei de kudesha b'riachu. La'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, tush b'chata v'nechemata, da'amiram v'yoma v'imru ame. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya v'chayim, aleinu v'yal kol yisrael v'imru ame. Ose shalom bim romav, hu yaase shalom, aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'imru amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn, and comfort all who are bereaved among us, and let us say together, amen. Shabbat Shalom once again to all who are with us here in the sanctuary and to all who are joining us online. We welcome you all. Temple Emmanuel is a house of prayer for all people and all who would worship here with us in peace are always most welcome. A few announcements of interest. Sunday, April 2nd from 1030 to noon, Women are welcome to join us for a special pre-Passover program entitled Retelling the Radical with the Women Clergy. Sunday at noon, 
the men's club screens the gripping film, A Tree of Life, the Pittsburgh Synagogue Shooting, which highlights both resilience and healing. Come celebrate Passover with us in person and online. Join us Wednesday evening at 515 for a brief Erev Pesach service. A virtual Seder follows at 610. Thursday morning services begin at 1030. As usual, they will also be accessible by live stream. And at 6 p.m., you may join our second Seder by live stream. For additional Passover resources, please go to our website where you can also learn about all of the other exciting upcoming events, emmanuelnyc.org. And after the final benediction, kindly leave your prayer books on your seats as you go. We continue now on page 246 with Kiddush and Motsi.
Please rise as we conclude with Adon Olam on page 254. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. May the light of God's presence shine upon you and be gracious to you. God's presence within you, and may it give you an abiding sense of peace. Amen. 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 Shalom.